Hello and welcome. If you're here to learn about the rounding functions in Excel, then you are in the right place. Because in this video, we're going to explain all the rounding functions in Excel. So we're going to explain the round function, the round up and round down functions, the mround function, the floor.math function, the ceiling.math function, the int and the trunk functions. In addition, you're going to be able to get our free rounding functions guide on your email address along with the example file through the link below in the description. I will also be splitting the video into different chapters so that you'll be able to fast forward to a particular function if you need to, although I would recommend that you watch the whole video. This video is going to be a lot of fun and packed full of information. And please, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you get notified with all our future videos. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first function we're gonna start with is the round function. So the round function will round your numbers up or down based on the number itself. And so the distinguishing feature of this function is that you will not be able to control whether the number gets rounded up or down, but rather the round function will round the number up or down based on the number itself. And so you cannot explicitly tell the round function, round this number up or round this number down, but rather the round function will just round it up or down based on the value of the number itself. And we will see that on the examples. So the round function takes two inputs. The first input is the number itself, which is the value to be rounded. And the second input is the number of digits input, which controls how the number gets rounded. And it controls it according to this table here. So if the number of digits is zero, then the number will get rounded up or down to the nearest integer. And we will see that shortly on the examples. And if the number of digits is greater than zero, then the rounding happens at the numbers on the right of the decimal point. So if you're rounding to n decimal places, then if the n plus one digit on the right of the decimal point is greater than or equal to five, then the number gets rounded up. Otherwise, it gets rounded down. And so if you want to round to three decimal places, you put the number of digits as a three. And so if the fourth digit to the right of the decimal point is greater than or equal to five, the number will get rounded up. Otherwise, if it's less than five, then it will get rounded down. And we will see that on the examples as well. And the third possibility is that the number of digits is less than zero, so it's a negative number. And if that's the case, then the number gets rounded up or down to the nearest 10 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 or 1 million. And we will see that as well on the examples. So let's go through some examples for the round function. So the first example here is we're rounding the number 14,596.502. And we're putting the number of digits as a zero here, right? So equals round this number and we're putting the number of digits as zero. So that means we're rounding to the nearest integer. However, the number will be rounded up to the nearest integer. So it will be rounded up and it will become 14,597 because the first digit to the right of the decimal point is greater than or equal to five. So when you put it as a zero, when you put the number of digits as zero, if the first digit to the right of the decimal point, if it is greater than or equal to five, the number will get rounded up. And if it is less than five, it will get rounded down as in example two. So in example number two here, it's the same integer, 14,596, but the decimals are different here. It's 0.499. So the first digit to the right of the decimal point is four, which is less than five. And this is why the number will get rounded down to the nearest integer. So it will become 14,596. 
Let's move on to the third example here, and our number is 456.2753. And we're rounding by putting the number of digits being equal to 1, and that means that we want to round to one decimal place. But because the second number here after the decimal point, or to the right of the decimal point, is 7, which is greater than or equal to 5, then the number gets rounded up to one decimal place, right? And this is the rule here, because here n is equal to 1, and so if the n plus 1 digit, which is the second number here, is greater than or equal to 5, then our number gets rounded up, which is what happened here. The number got rounded up to 456.3. And here, it's the same integer, but with a different uh, fraction part or decimal part. It's 456.2353. So because the second number after the decimal point is less than 5, the number got rounded down to 456.2. And if we try to round here the number, this number 456.2353, to two decimal places, then Excel will check the third number here after the decimal point. So third number is five here. So this is greater than or equal to five. And so our number will get rounded up to two decimal places here and it will become 456.24. In example six, it's 456.2323 and we need to round that to two decimal places only so because the third number or the third digit here to the right of the decimal place is a two then the number gets rounded down and it becomes 456.23 let's move on to example number seven here where we're rounding this number here 455.2323 and we're putting the, our number of digits to be equal to negative 1, which would fall in this category here, less than 0. So that means that we're rounding to the nearest 10. And to think about the nearest 10, so if we divide 455 by 10, we would say that we have crossed or we've been through 45 tens. This number contains 45 tens. So the next 10 which is the 10 number 46 would make us go to 460 and the previous 10 would make us go to 450. So whether we're going to round up or down will depend on the value of the number itself. And because this number is 455, the integer part of it is 455. So because our number of digits is less than zero, we're actually focused on this part of the number. We're focused on this part of the number. We're not focused on this part. So we don't care about the decimal part anymore because our number of digits is less than zero. We're focused on this part, on the integer part of the number. So whether the number is going to be rounded up or down will depend on the value of the number itself. So because this number is 455, so it's more than halfway, it's halfway or more towards the next 10, which is at 460. So because it's 455, then the number gets rounded up to 460. But here, if the number is 454, it will get rounded down to 450. So this is why this number has been rounded up and this number has been rounded down. And this is because we're rounding to the nearest 10. Now, for the same number, if we put our number of digits to be negative 2, that means we're rounding to the nearest 100. And the nearest 100, so if you think about the number 450, it contains four 100s. So the next 100 would take you to 500. And the previous 100 would take you down to 400. So this is where we're going to round up or down. 
we're going to either round up to 500 or round down to 400. But because this number is 450, so it's halfway or more. So if it's 450 or more, the number gets rounded up to 500. But if it's 449 or less, so between 440 and 449, it will be rounded down to 400. All right? And here, if we put the number of digits to be negative 3, then we're rounding up or down to the nearest 1,000. So our number here is 1,500, okay? And we don't care about the decimal part, right? Because this is a negative number. When this is a negative number, the decision gets made based on the integer part of the number, right? So we're, we're rounding up or down to the nearest 1,000. So this number contains already a 1,000, and so the next 1,000 would be at 2,000, or it can go down to the previous 1,000, which is 1,000. So because this number is 1,500, so it's halfway or more towards the 2,000, then it gets rounded up to 2,000. And because this number is 1499 or less, so anywhere between 1000 and 1499 will be rounded down to the nearest 1000. So it will become a 1000 only. So this is how the decision is made on whether the number gets rounded up or down if you put the number of digits less than zero. So as you can see here, when you put the number of digits less than zero to be less than zero, then the number will be rounded up or down based on the numbers to the left and everything, all the work gets done based on the numbers to the left of the decimal point. So we're going to be rounding up or down to the nearest 10, 100 or 1000, or if you put it as negative four, then it's the nearest 10,000. If you put it as negative five, so it's the nearest 100,000. And if you put it as negative six, it's the nearest million. So you can just play with it to be able to understand it more. I would recommend that you try to round some random numbers just to be able to understand how the round function works more. But again, the distinguishing feature about the round function is that you cannot explicitly tell it whether to round the number up or down, but rather it decides to round the number up or down based on the number itself. And the functions that you can tell to round the number up or down explicitly are the round up and the round down functions, and we're going to discuss these next. All right, so we've spoken about the round function, and we've mentioned that with the round function, we're not able to control whether the number gets rounded up or down, and that whether the number gets rounded up or down would depend on the number itself. So if we need to explicitly control whether the number gets rounded up or down, then we need to use the round up and round down functions. So as you can see, they take the same inputs as the round function. So the first input is the number itself, and the second input is the number of digits. And they work exactly the same way. So the number is the number itself, and the number of digits, if it's a zero, then the number will get rounded up or down to the nearest integer. And if the number is a positive number, then the rounding happens to the numbers on the right of the decimal point. And if the number of digits is a negative number, then the rounding happens to the numbers on the left of the decimal point and the number gets rounded up or down to the nearest 10 or 100 or 1000 or 10,000 or 100,000 or 1 million depending on the value on the number of digits. So let's actually have some examples here. So on the first example, we have this number here, 14,000. 596 and we are using the round up function with the number of digits being a zero so because the number of digits is a zero the number will be rounded up because we're using the round up function the number will always be rounded up and it'll be rounded up to 14597 so of course if we use the round up function our number will always be rounded up and here, uh, with the same number, we're using the round down function with the number of digits being a zero. Then the number gets rounded down to 14,596. So it gets rounded down to the nearest integer, which is 14,596. 
In example number three here, our number is 456.2753, and we're using the round of function with the number of digits input being a one. And that means that the number would be rounded up at the first decimal place. So here the first decimal place is a two. It would be rounded up to a three, so it becomes 456.3. And here the same number, we're using the round down function with the number of digits being one. The number gets rounded down to 456.2. And here in example number five, our number is 456.2753. And we're using the round up function with the number of digits being two. So the rounding will happen to the number on the second decimal place here. So the number on the second decimal place is a seven. So it will become an eight and it's going to become 456.28. And here in example number six, our number is the same, but we're using the round down function instead. So our number becomes 456.27. The number would get rounded down but it will be a six it will still be a seven because technically this number is greater than four five six point twenty seven as it has more decimals here so it gets rounded down to four five six point twenty seven and then here in example number seven our number is four hundred and fifty one point three six four four and we're using the round up function with the number of digits being a negative one and that means that number is going to be rounded to the nearest 10 and it's going to be rounded up to the nearest 10. So 451 here has 45 tens and so the next 10 is the 10 number 46 and so the 10 number 46 is 460 so it gets rounded up to 460. And here it's 459.9999. So as you can see here, it's 459.9999. And here it's so close to 460. But because we're using the round down function, the number would get rounded down to the nearest 10. So 459 has 45 tens already. And it's still greater than 45 tens. So it's so close to 460. But it gets rounded down to the 10 number 45 and it becomes 450. So as you can see here, it doesn't matter what the value of your number is. If you use the round up function, the number will always get rounded up. And if you use the round down function, the number will always get rounded down. And here in example number nine, we're using the round up function with the number of digits being a negative two. And so it will round up to the nearest 100. So 400, has four 100s already and so the next 100 to round up to is 500 and here it's 499.9999 we're rounding down to the nearest 100 so this contains already four 100s it still hasn't reached the next 100 which is 500 so it already contains four 100s and so it gets rounded down to 400 and here in example number 11, we're using a negative three here. So we're rounding to the nearest 1000. And because we're using the round up function, then we're going to round up. Our number is 1000. So the next 1000, we've got only one 1000 in this number. Next 1000 is the 2000. And here it's 1999.9999. So, so close to 2000, but not there yet. And... We've got only one 1,000 in that number, so rounding that number down by using the round down function, rounding it down, it's going to become a 1,000. So as you can see here, the round up and round down functions work exactly like the round function, except for the fact that they enable us to always round up and always round down our numbers rather than the number being grounded up or down based on the value of the number itself. All right, guys, so now we're going to speak about the M round function. So the M round function can round the number to the nearest multiple of another number. So you supply it with the number and you supply it with the multiple and it will round your number to the nearest multiple of the multiple that you supply it with. And you may ask whether your number will be rounded up or down. So this is actually decided by a rule that 
the amround function just applies in the background so you will not see this rule being applied you will not see anything it's just that the amround function applies that rule and the rule is that the remainder of dividing the number by the multiple and we can get the remainder of using the mod function in excel of course this is why i'm using the mod here so the remainder of dividing the number by the multiple is greater than or equal to half of the multiple so this is the rule so if this is true or if the remainder is actually greater than or equal to half of the multiple then the number will be rounded up and if it is not greater than or equal to half of the multiple then the number gets rounded down so let's have some examples to be able to understand this function better so in example one here we're trying to round the number 10 to the nearest multiple of 3. So the remainder of dividing 10 by 3, it's the remainder and not the result, is 1. So this is the remainder of dividing 10 by 3, it's 1. And dividing the multiple by 2, the multiple is 3, if we divide it by 2, it's 1.5. So that means that the remainder of this division here is not going to be greater than or equal to half of the multiple because the remainder is 1 and half of the multiple is 1.5 so that means that our number would be rounded down so our number 10 would be rounded down to the nearest multiple of 3 so the nearest multiple of 3 that is less than 10 is actually going to be 9 so this is going to be our result and here is how we wrote our function we used the m round function and we inserted the value of b15 here which is 10 and then our multiple is 3 which is c15 here so this is number 3 so this is simply what we've done and the result is 9 in example 2 here we're trying to round negative 10 to the nearest multiple of negative 3 so of course the remainder of dividing the number by the multiple is negative 1 this is the remainder and half of the multiple is negative 1.5 so that means that the remainder of dividing the number by the multiple which is negative 1 is greater than or equal to half of the multiple which is negative 1.5 right because negative 1 is greater than negative 1.5 so that means our number would be rounded up and so our result is negative 9 because negative 10 will be rounded up to the nearest multiple of negative 3. So the nearest multiple of negative 3 that is greater than negative 10 is negative 9. So this will be our result. Our result will be negative 9. And there is something about the m round function, which is that the number and the multiple cannot have different signs. So you can't supply a positive number and a negative multiple or vice versa the function will not work and you will get a num error so here if we supply the number as negative 10 and the multiple is 3 so you can see here number is negative multiple is positive and the rule really will not apply so the function will just give you an error here so the number and the multiple have to have the same sign all right so let's have another example here in example four our number is 53 and our multiple is 5. So the remainder of dividing 53 by 5 is going to be 3. Right? So this is going to be the remainder of the division. And half of the multiple here, which is half of 5, is 2.5. So that means that the remainder of the division, which is 3, is greater than or equal to half of the multiple, which is 2.5. And that means that our number will be rounded up. So the result of our m round function will be 55. And so 55 is the nearest multiple of 5 that is greater than 53. So this is going to be our result. And then here in example 5, our number is 61 and our multiple is 6. So the remainder of dividing the number by the multiple is 1. And half of the multiple is 3. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. And so that means that the remainder of the division is not greater than or equal to half of the multiple. Because the remainder of the division is 1 and half of the multiple is 3. So that means that our number, which is 61, would be rounded down to the nearest multiple of 6. So the nearest multiple of 6 that is less than 61 is 60. So it's 6 by 10. So this is the nearest multiple of 6, which is 60. So this is going to be our result here. And then in example 6, our number is 1579. 
our multiple is 15. So the remainder of dividing 1,579 by 15 is 4. So this is the remainder of the division, not the result. Remember, this is the remainder. And half of the multiple, half of 15 is 7.5, 7 7.5. And, and that means that the remainder of the division, which is... Uh, 4 is not greater than 7.5, right? So the number would be rounded down. So 1579 would be rounded down to the nearest multiple of 15, which is 1575. All right, guys. So we've spoken about the M round function, and we've explained that whether the number gets rounded up or down to the nearest multiple of another number, this would depend on a rule, and we've explained that rule. But what if we want to always round the number down, no matter what the number is or what the multiple is, we always want to round it down. In this case, we can use the floor.math function because the floor.math function will round the number to the nearest multiple, but it will always round it down. And it has three inputs. One is mandatory and the other two are optional. So the first input is the number. And the number is the number that we need to round. And then second input is the significance, which is basically the multiple. And uh, this is optional because if it's not provided, then it's going to be rounded down to the nearest multiple of one. So it's going to be rounded down to the nearest integer. And then we have the mode, which is useful in case of a negative number in case we want to round a negative number so it controls whether negative numbers get rounded towards or away from zero so it controls whether negative numbers get rounded in the direction towards zero or away from zero and the default value is zero and in this case the numbers would be rounded away from zero so this is the third input which is the mode here so this is only useful in case you have a negative number all right so this function is best understood using some examples so let's have some examples so the first example here our number is 10 and our significance which is basically our multiple is 3 and so if we use the floor.math function we give it first input as 10, which is our number, and then our significance or multiple is 3. Then it gets rounded down to the nearest multiple of 3, which is 9. And we don't need to give it the third input because our number is not a negative number. So the third input does not have any value and will not work even if we supply it because it only works in case of negative numbers. And our second example here. Our number is 13.654, our significance or multiple is 2, so we want to round it down to the nearest multiple of 2, which gives our result as 12, because this is the nearest multiple of 2, because 12 is 2 by 6. So this is the nearest multiple of 2, and because the number is going to be rounded down, so the result needs to be less than our number. So this is why we get a 12 here. And then in example 3 here, our number is negative 10 and our significance is negative 3. So this is our multiple. And for the mode here, we can give it a 0 or 1. And 1 translates into true and 0 translates into false. So if we give it a 0 here, a false, that means that the number would be rounded away from 0. So if we round negative 10 to the nearest multiple of negative 3, so if we're running in the direction away from 0, so we're going away from 0, so if this is 0, right, we're going away from 0, so in the negative direction, so this means that we would get the negative 12 here because this would be the nearest multiple of negative 3 because negative 12 is negative 3 by 4. So this would be our result. Our result would be negative 12 because we supplied the mode as a 0 here so as to round the number away from 0. But in example number 4, it's the same number and significance or multiple, but our mode is 1. So that means that we're rounding in the direction towards zero so we're getting closer to zero here so we get a negative nine because negative nine is negative three by three and the floor 
dot math function can be used as well to round down times for example here so we can round for example a time of 7 12 so this is 7 12 a.m we can round it down to the nearest multiple of 15 minutes so the nearest multiple of 15 minutes would be 7 a.m so this is another application of the floor dot math function and this is useful in case you're creating an attendance sheet or so and you want to calculate or round numbers up or down to the nearest 15 minutes so as to get the attendance or so so this is useful in that case let me also tell you that before we had the floor.math function because the floor.math function was introduced in excel 2013 we had a function that we used to use which is the floor function and it's now become a legacy function and it's not recommended by Microsoft that you use it it's it's recommended that you use the floor.math function so the floor function has only two inputs so if you write equals floor you will see first that floor here has an exclamation mark on it and that it's it's a legacy function where it rounds a number down to the nearest multiple of significance and it has only two inputs the number and the significance so the floor.math function is better because uh, it has that extra level of control over negative numbers and whether they get rounded towards or away from zero but the floor function does not have that functionality and it will always round negative numbers in the direction towards zero actually so you can see here by using the floor function with the negative number negative 10 and rounding it to the nearest multiple negative 3 will be rounded towards zero and the result will be negative 9 so the floor function would always round towards zero but the floor dot math function gives you the control on whether to round the negative number towards zero or away from zero but other than that, they work exactly the same. But after the introduction of the floor.math function, it's recommended that you use the floor.math and not the floor function because the floor function has become a legacy function and it's only available in newer versions of Excel for the sake of compatibility with older Excel versions. Okay, so we've spoken about the floor.math function and we've explained that with the floor.math function, you're able to round a number down to the nearest multiple of another number. But what if you need to round the number up instead of down, then you use the ceiling.math function. So the ceiling.math function takes three inputs and two of them are optional. The first input is the number which is the number that you need to round and then the significance is basically the multiple that you need to round the number up to and then the mode which is used only in case of negative numbers so this controls whether negative numbers get rounded towards or away from zero and the default value is zero and in this case the number would be rounded towards zero instead of away from zero like the floor the math function all right, so let's have some examples. So the first example here, our number is 10 and our significance or multiple is 3. And so the number gets rounded up to the nearest multiple of 3, which is 12, because 12 is 3 by 4. So this would be the result, the result of rounding 10 to the nearest multiple of 3. And it would be rounded up because we're using the ceiling.math function. The result would be 12. On the second example here, our number is 13.654. Our significance or multiple is 2. So we round it up to the nearest multiple of 2, which is 14, because 14 is 7 by 2. And then on example 3 here, we have a negative 10, and our significance or multiple is negative 3, and our mode is 0. So if you round it towards zero because uh, when we give our mode as a zero here the number would be rounded towards zero so our result would be a negative nine so this is the nearest multiple of negative three when rounding towards zero and here if we provide it with the number of negative 10 significance is negative three or the multiple is negative three but in this case here our mode is one so that means that the number would be rounded away from zero so result would be negative 12 here and then here we can use it as well with times so rounding up 7 12 a.m to the nearest multiple of 15 minutes would give us 7 15 a.m here 
because we're rounding up to the nearest multiple of 15 minutes. And also, before the existence of the ceiling.math function, so before it was introduced in Excel 2013, we had another function that we were using, which is the ceiling function. So this is a, a legacy function now, and it's recommended that you always use the ceiling.math function, and it has only two inputs, so it lacked that control over negative numbers, whether to round towards or away from zero, just like the case with the floor.math and the floor function. And so these are some examples here, and uh, with uh, 10 and multiple of 3, we get a 12 because we're rounding up, and then here negative 10 and negative 3, here it would always round away from zero. So in case of negative numbers, the ceiling function would always round away from zero. So we didn't have a choice with the ceiling function. We didn't have any control. It would just round away from zero in case of negative numbers. But with the ceiling.math function, we do have that control and we're able to choose whether negative numbers get rounded towards or away from zero. Now we're going to speak about the int function. So the int function will convert your number to an integer or round it to the nearest integer. However, in case of positive numbers, it will always round your number down to the nearest integer. And in case of negative numbers, it will always round it in the direction away from zero. And that means that it will act like a round up function as well. And we will see that. And it takes only one input, which is the number that you need to round to the nearest integer. So let's have some examples here. So in example one, our number is 3.158. And when using the int function, the result is three. So it will be just rounded down to the nearest integer, which is three. And here in example two, our number is 78.634. It will be rounded down to 78. So you can notice here that with positive numbers, it always rounds down. In case of negative numbers, it will round in the direction away from zero. So in example three here, now our number is negative 45.987, applying the int function to that and our result is negative 46. So it will always round in the direction away from zero. Here is negative 78.935, and our result is negative 79, so it's rounding in the direction away from zero. Uh, and you can think about the int function as a, a round down in case of positive numbers, so rounding down the number with zero digits, and the number of digits here, so you can notice that the result is the same, which is a three here. And if we copy that, the round down, we'll do the same for example number two, but for example number three and four, which are the negative numbers, if we use the round up, you would need to use the round up to get the same result. So we use the round up with zero here, and we get the same result here as the int function. So you can think about the int function as a round down with number of digits equal to zero in case of positive numbers and a round up with a number of digits equal to zero in case of negative numbers. All right, so now let's speak about the trunk function. So the trunk function will simply truncate a number. And truncating a number usually means removing part of the number. And we will see that more and it's going to be clearer when we go into the examples. But this function takes only two inputs. The first input is the number that you need to truncate or remove a part of. And the second input is the number of digits. And this is also called the precision of truncation. And uh, its default value is equal to zero. And that means that if you do not supply the number of digits because it's an optional argument or input because it has square brackets around it, if you do not supply it, then its default value will be equal to zero. Let's actually dive into the examples because the examples are what is going to help us understand the function better. So on example number one here, our number is 1579.456. And we use the trunk function, but we did not supply the number of digits. So that means that it's equal to zero. And that means that we will simply truncate all the numbers to the right of the decimal point and we won't be doing any rounding the trunk function will not do any rounding it will simply just remove the decimal part so simply just omit the decimal part and give us just the integer 
part here. This is what the trunk function will do. And then if we supply it with a number of digits equal to 1, with the case here, the number is 3.1587. So if the number of digits is equal to 1, that means that it will keep only the first digit to the right of the decimal point. So our number will become 3.1. There's no rounding. It's just that it's going to keep the first digit after the decimal point and truncate or remove all the other digits. And here, in example number 3, our number is 78.6342. Our number of digits is equal to 2. So we'll keep only two digits and remove the rest of the digits. And here in example number 4, we explicitly put the number of digits to be equal to 0 here with this number 48,587.94537. So simply just also truncate the decimal part, remove all the decimal numbers and just keep the integer part of the number. And here in example number 5, our number is 1045. So when you supply the number of digits as a negative number what it will do is that it will go in this direction here so it will go into the uh, integer part of the number and just replace a number with a zero so if you give it a negative one so it will replace the first number to the left of the decimal point so in this case is the number five it will replace it with a zero and making the number here one zero four zero if you give it a negative 2, then it will replace two numbers here to the left of the decimal point. So the 7 and the 8, it will replace them with a 0 here. And it will also remove the decimal part. In a, If you give it a negative number, there will be no decimal part as well. So this part as well will be removed. This part would be removed as well. And it, because you gave it negative 2, so it will take the first two digits here to the left of the decimal point and just replace them with zero. So we'll remove these two digits here, replace this with zero, replace this with zero, and our result is negative 9400. And then this number here, we have number of digits is equal to negative three. Our number is uh, 109,874. So we'll omit the three digits here before the decimal point, so or to the left of the decimal point, and we'll also remove all the decimal numbers. Uh, it will just replace all these digits with zeros. So our number becomes 109,000. So this is simply what the trunk function does. It does not do rounding. It simply removes part of the number. It doesn't do any rounding. So that's it for the rounding functions in Excel. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget that you can download the example file and our rounding functions guide through the link below in the description. And if you like the video, please hit that like button below and share the video to help spread the Excel knowledge. Please also make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow us on social media through the links below in the description. Thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video.